In today's episode, Operation Engine Bay Cleanup commences. We're going to strip everything off the engine and gearbox so that the hardware can get deposited for zinc coating and we're diving deep into the orifices of the bay in an attempt to get it cleaned and painted. Hey guys and welcome to another episode. So I'm going to start off by saying that I am super hungover. Uh, yesterday night I went for a few drinks. So my apologies if in the start of this video I am going to be a bit sluggish. But uh, I am super excited to continue with Operation Saab Engine Bay Cleanup. So that is why I pulled myself together and we're in the shop right now. And we are going to pick up where we left in the previous episode and that was with this gearbox. Uh, if you have missed that episode, I highly recommend you take a look. But uh, in short, I took this 5-speed gearbox out of my donor car. We are going to put it in uh, the project car. I vapor honed the entire thing and now I want to make sure that there is no blasting media that got inside of the gearbox. So we are going to open it up completely to make sure that everything on the inside checks out. And then also uh, we are going to be taking off all of the bolts uh, and nuts to get them zinc coated again. And my main focus today is going to be to gather all of the hardware that I want to get zinc coated because there is about a two weeks lead time on this. And I want to make sure that once we want to start reassembling everything, that all of my nuts and bolts are back again. So let's just start zapping everything off this gearbox in an organized fashion. Uh, and our goal for today is to gather about four kilos of SAP hardware. So here we have all the gearbox related hardware and as you can see I've kind of put all of these bolts in groups uh, together with a, a label where they go. Uh, and the reason why that's important for me is because during the zinc coating process all of this will be thrown into one bucket and then uh, you also receive it back like that. So it can be quite challenging in the end to know uh, where each bolt goes. So uh, the way that I solve that is uh, I label them and put them in groups like this. And then I also take a picture uh, together with the measurements. And that way, once everything gets back, it's much, much easier to, uh, yeah, to sort everything out again. Working like this takes a little longer during the preparation phase. But uh, I am sure that once we receive everything back, we are going to save ourselves a load of time. Uh, for now, I have weighed all of this and we are at 2.3 kilos, which means that we can do some more bolt hunting. And what I think I want to do now is basically strip everything off this engine uh, that I want either zinc coated or painted. Uh, and I'm also going to take a look at the oil leaks around the timing chain. Let's start with the alternator.
Let's see if we can quickly take this off. The little key that needs to go in here to block the pulley is missing, so uh, I'll need to go on the hunt for that. And now the water pump. blue stuff. Now let's take off the power steering pump. Hopefully the crank pulley won't give us too much trouble. The oil seal came with it. It might be possible that this was the one that was causing all of this mess. Actually, I might have been a bit too quick. Uh, what I think I'm going to do is slide this back in so that the engine stays closed and we can degrease all of this without all of the muck getting inside of the engine. Now all of this can come off. Okay, now I'm going to try to take off the cover for the timing chain. By the looks of it, we first are going to have to take off the gearbox if we want to take off this cover, so for now I'm going to leave that there. So now I'm going to continue with taking off the inlet manifold. And now L dipstick. The oil filter needs to come off first. And now the other engine mount.
I found a leak in the fuel pump, so that needs to be replaced. So guys, yesterday night I managed to strip all the parts of the engine uh, that I wanted to come off uh, and that was together with the hardware. So today I quickly organized everything and then deposited the nuts and bolts at the company that is going to zinc out everything. So for now that means that we are at a bit of a standstill for uh, the engine side of things uh, because we're going to have to wait about two weeks for the nuts and bolts to come back. Uh, and that is also why I am keeping the gearbox and these two covers on here. So. Uh, the engine stays a bit sealed up while we're going to be doing some other stuff. And I think for the remainder of this episode that I am going to focus on preparing the engine bay for paint. Uh, and you guys can see that there still is a bunch of stuff here inside of the bay. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is strip out everything. To get a clean result, I think it is also necessary that we repaint this front section. Uh, you can clearly see that somebody has already tried painting it black but they did it directly on top of the rust and it is already peeling off. So uh, what I think I'm going to do is to take off this entire front section. And what I might also do is drill out the spot welds and separate this upper piece from the two ones over here. And that way I might be able to fit all of the pieces into the sandblaster at work. Look at all this room for activities. Let's continue. Next I'm going to take off all of the brake lines together with the brake booster and the master cylinder. The window wiper mechanism should come out by removing four bolts. So guys, the engine bay is really starting to look empty, but there still are a few things that I want to pull off. For example, uh, the exhausts are still in the way, the drive shafts, but uh, our main job is going to be to get the steering rack out of here. And actually, now that we are at it, I think I'm also going to yank out the front suspension because there won't be a better moment to clean all of this up than now.
The steering rack is absolutely filthy, so I think tomorrow I am going to ask if I can degrease it at work because uh, yeah, that will be way more convenient than if I would have to do it here in my shop. So uh, yeah, now let's focus on taking out all of the suspension. So guys, the engine bay is pretty much completely stripped, so that means that we can start working on the paint prep. Uh, and the first phase of that will be to degrease everything, because in the armpits of this car, there is just a huge amount of dirt and grime that accumulated. So uh, before we're going to start sanding, all of that needs to be cleaned. I'm going to try to get as much dirt out by just scooping it away. And then by the end, I'm going to pressure wash the entire thing. But uh, this is just to avoid that my whole shop will get covered in, yeah, whatever this is. This looks important. Look at that, almost no need for painting. And now let's pressure wash this thing. The engine bay looks 10 times cleaner than before and I guess now we can move on to the next phase of preparing the engine bay for paint. Uh, I am going to sand all of this down with a 400 grit but I'm also going to take a look at all of the surface rust that is coming through. Uh, what I am going to do is take my wire wheel and grind all of the surface rust away and then treat everything with some rust converter so that we are safe for the future. Well, as you guys can see, the project has escalated a little bit. Uh, I took everything down to bare metal, which wasn't what I was planning. But uh, I was sanding the paint on this side when I noticed that there are like five layers of paint on this thing and some of them have reacted with each other. So it didn't seem like a good idea to throw on yet another coat of paint. So uh, that is why I decided to take everything to bare metal. Uh, and now we are going to copy and paste this on this side and for the firewall I think we're going to get away with just sanding so uh, yeah let's continue mm -hmm. 
So I have been sanding and sandblasting for quite a while now, but I think the bay is finally approaching a state where uh, it is ready for paint. We just need to degrease everything first and then also mask everything off here. Uh, also, something to note, yesterday night my mate Elias came by and we took off the heat shield uh, that sits in front of the firewall. And today he is coming over again to give me a hand painting this thing. So uh, yeah, hopefully by tonight this entire engine bay should look mint. Well guys, here we have the result and I must say that I'm very impressed that uh, Elias did this without using a paint boot. Uh, the finish is pretty good, uh, there are some dust particles in it uh, in some areas, but uh, yeah, that was to be expected. Uh, here you can see that uh, the clear coat is a bit thin and orange peely, but uh, we wanted to play it safe because we didn't have a ton of clear coat to put on this. So uh, we left this area a bit uh, dry because this plate is going to go over it anyway. So uh, yeah, it wasn't really that important. It is also the first time that I'm seeing the car's true color in pretty good condition. So uh, yeah, this makes me super motivated to repaint the entire car and make it look as shiny as the engine bay. So I guess that is going to conclude this episode. Uh, I think we made a lot of progress uh, and I'm super motivated to keep going. I also have to give a massive thank you to Elias, uh, he really made all of this possible. I would never be able to get the engine bay looking this clean, so uh, a big thank you to him. Uh, and I also want to inform you guys that yesterday yeah, I got a call that all of the zinc coated hardware is done. Uh, so that means that in the next episode we can continue with uh, rebuilding the suspension and the engine and stuff. So yeah. Lots to be excited for. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I hope all of you will be watching for the next one. Uh, if you liked what you saw, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing. And until next time. <laughs>